Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Rakdos Midrange. Welcome back, everybody, to a standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing really well today. I'm very excited for today's deck for a multitude of reasons. First and foremost, it's a Rakdos midrange deck. There are a lot of very powerful things, but I don't often see a lot of Rakdos-style decks, so I'm kind of intrigued to try this one out. Second, though, this is actually recommended to us by one of our amazing community members. Uh, he did share an Aether Hub link, Aether Hub link with me. Uh, he's Chief Joseph on there. That will be linked down below, but... Uh, uh, again, thank you so much for the suggestion. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I did ask if anybody had any deck suggestions, things like that. Feel free to leave them in our deck list share in the uh, Discord. Uh, and so if you have a standard deck, really any deck, but in particular standard that you would like to see, maybe one you put together, uh, send it to me. I'd love to test it out. And that's what we're going to do today. So excuse me like i said this is Rakdos mid-range so uh we've got a lot of the usual suspects here so um by that i mean things like blood tithe harvester of course uh bloodthirsty adversary which is a really nice include just because we can obviously pull things back with it uh we actually have tainted adversary as well uh which is kind of an interesting include i don't normally see this or at least i haven't unless i'm in a zombie deck uh, and so I'm kind of curious to see what, uh, or how that actually plays out. We do have the Reckoner Bankbuster here and Meat Hook Massacre, of course, uh, a couple Shatter Skull Smashings too. Um, Valky is in here as a one of, which as you guys know, is one of my favorite cards right now. Uh, we have Infernal Grass for some removal, Soul Transfer for some removal. Uh, one of my favorite mid-range creatures, which is Graveyard Trespasser. I say mid-range three drop, kind of mid-rangey. Um... The reason I like this so much is because it's actually really tricky for the opponent to deal with. It's also a great way to bolster your life total a little bit. So uh, there are a lot of situations where you're against an aggro deck. And so being able to just gain a couple points of life could be the difference between you winning or losing a game. So a very nice card here. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, of course, an all-around great card for us, so we definitely want that. Uh, Florian makes an appearance as a two of. Florian is a hugely, hugely powerful card and really going to help us out quite a bit. Uh, Immersturm Predator, a very interesting one because, again, I haven't seen this for a while, but... Uh, very, very good. It's a, an aggressive flyer, uh, obviously can get bigger and difficult to deal with if you've got other creatures on the board, which again, in tandem with things like the Tainted Adversary, makes a lot of sense. So I'm kind of curious to see if that interaction actually plays out. And then sitting at the top end, we have Lulth, uh, which is of course just an all around great card, especially for a mid range kind of control -y deck. Uh, this obviously has a lot more aggressive threats mixed in with some really good removal. So we're going to see how this one goes. Uh, we do have a full sideboard here if you happen to play uh, traditional with it, but we are of course in best of one. Uh, so just to keep that in mind. But again, I just want to say a huge thank you for the suggestion. Leave yours in our Discord channel or you can just leave them down in the comments below. But we're going to jump right in, guys. We're going to see how this goes. Hopefully we can get some wins. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is actually a pretty reasonable start. We've got the Harvester, the tra the Trespasser there, and then, of course, a Braid and Reckoner Bankbuster just for a little bit of added bonus. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, a Braid's also a very interesting one, by the way. Um, normally, of course, we don't see too much of the uh, a Braid, but I do really like it. Let's go ahead and drop this and drop the Blood Tithe Harvester. I think I'd rather get this down so we can be aggressive if we need to be. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Um, interesting, interesting. All right. Let's see what happens. Thermo Alchemist. Interesting. Well, I mean, on the bright side, a braid actually is a really clean answer to uh, the Thermo Alchemist. We're going to offer this up first. Um, cool. They're not going to take it. I'm going to preemptively kill uh, the Thermo Alchemist. Here's the deal. That over time is a really big problem for us because obviously it's going to just start pinging away so if we can get it to where it just doesn't deal damage to us and they miss the opportunity to block it seems pretty reasonable to go for it it also does fuel the graveyard for the trespasser which is going to be a really big play for us because we can gain some of that life back so we'll see how this goes but i think that's a perfectly reasonable play and of course they're going to be able to deal a little bit of damage to us but that's fine uh, again, if anything, that actually fuels the Graveyard tres Trespasser quite well. Uh, and I do think the Trespasser is going to be a really good threat for us because uh, it's obviously a little bit trickier for them to deal with. They're going to have to discard a card to do it. Uh, and so I would love to see 
uh, how this actually goes. We're going to go ahead and gain a life, and we'll just pass. Um, next turn, we can Tainted Adversary plus uh, one activation if we would like. Alternatively, we can just Reckoner and then draw. Uh, I think it kind of depends on what they do, but this is going to be a two for one. I mean, no matter what they do, they have to discard a card to deal with it. So uh, I am all too happy to uh, let this happen here. We're going to burn them out of resources as best we can. They discarded Eruption for an Eruption, uh, and that's great. Um, it's just less stuff we have to deal with, so I'm totally fine with it. Okay. Uh, an annoying card for sure, um, but it's not the end of the world. Alright, um, let's play the land. And interesting, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go for the, uh, adversary here, I think. Uh, it's just a nice little play for us. The death touch is great, and we do get, um the activation off so that's quite helpful meat hook massacre hmm. interesting um what is the move i wonder so we can just den of the bugbear to start doing that or we can uh hive i honestly i'm gonna den of the bugbear uh, this seems unexciting, I get it, but the important thing here is that we're going to be spreading out the tokens, and it's more things for them to have to deal with. So they do get a free block here, of course, but we're putting a much stronger clock on them by doing it this way, and I feel like that's probably worth it. Um, sure. Alright, let's see what they do. Um, it just means that we can continuously attack him for a little bit of extra damage, even if it is only chip damage, it's worthwhile. Um, Alright, so they're going to start pinging. I'm assuming they're going to be able to do some stuff. Sure. So they're going to invoke Calamity. I assume for a Royal Eruption uh, to start. Probably more than just that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, hey, this is very good. Uh, but they are cleaning themselves out from their graveyard. So on the plus side, we probably <laughs> won't have too much else to deal with. So... That's good. We can meat hook next turn as well, so uh, we can get their Thermo Alchemist off the board, and then theoretically they just won't have much left. Um, alternatively, we could wait just to see, but uh, I mean, I'm pretty pretty happy with the way this has gone. Um, that's actually a very good draw. So we can do this, uh, grab our Braid, and just go ahead and ping this and get it off of the, the field here. Uh, so we actually don't have to throw the meat hook away yet. Uh, which I think is better. Let's go ahead and deal that 3 damage here. Um, definitely hitting the Alchemist and not them, despite that being actually kind of tempting. Um, I think we definitely want to just get that off the board, so that way, uh, when we need to, we can just get that attack in and hopefully finish off the game. So, we'll see. Alright, Igneous Inspiration is quite good. Uh, it does deal with that, but again... We've got some creatures here that we're actually going to be able to activate and uh, creature land, excuse me, that can actually just win. Um, so let's just do this. I believe this is it. Uh, they can't activate theirs. There we go. We got the win. That was perfect, guys. Uh, well done. Let's jump into game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash itresolves for details. Alright everybody, let's see if we can keep this up. That was a great start to, uh, to the matches here, uh, or the games I should say. Now this is an interesting hand. Uh, it's a little slow on the fact that it we don't really do anything, of course, until turn three. Now, we do have the adversary if we want to just drop that down. Uh, and I think because of that, I'm actually okay with keeping this. Uh, normally, I would say, eh, it's a little sketchy, but, excuse me, I think we'll be able to make this uh, at least hopefully work. <laughs> uh, one little bit of a non-bow uh, that needs to be recognized is the fact that soul transfer doesn't work super well with graveyard chest passer. Now, that being said, that's a pretty minimal thing to consider, but uh, it is worth considering that maybe there is a different option uh, for removal. I do really like the fact that this exiles, though. It's very important to be able to exile in the in the meta right now, uh, and so there's it's a perfectly valid thing to throw in there. It's just one of those things to consider. Um, I'm actually going to attack. I don't think... Uh, I, my guess is they don't block, um, but I am going to go for it. 
I'm assuming this is going to be a, like, they've got, like, Boon of Safety and some other random stuff. Um, but we'll see. Alright. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's see. So, um, I mean, I think the play is we do this. Uh, and it might just be Fable. Now, nah, let's Graveyard Trespasser. This is going to be harder to lock down, so... If this is a Doom Scar, which it very well might be, uh, they might be enticed to use it this turn just because the Trespasser is going to be tricky for them to actually fight through. Now, they do have the Raptor, don't get me wrong, but uh, we do have a Soul Transfer to get rid of that if we so choose. Um, so, we'll we'll see. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get any like life gain value off of playing the Trespasser here, but it does prevent a reasonable attack on their end. So, we'll see if this actually pans out, but... Uh, if they want to deal with it, they are going to have to di discard a card or just sweep. Okay, they're going to Fateful Absence. Looks like they are not willing to discard a card, which is really good to know. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. So we can't Shatter Skull Smashing as a uh, spell. We can play it as a land, which is probably going to be the case if I had to assume. Uh, let's attack in. Go ahead and exile this just to get it out of there. Um, we'll see if they block. I kind of doubt it. Uh, but we are going to kind of offer this up. They also did not play a land last turn, uh, which is really important to note because it looks like they're going to be struggling on, uh, on mana here a little bit. So it's very, very helpful. Uh, let's see if they want to block. It's kind of an odd deck to, to see the Raptor in particular. Um, not a card I really expected to see, just in general. Uh, and so that's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and throw this out. We're going to throw it out tapped, of course. Um, and I think I'm just going to play the, tr the second Trespasser here. Uh, we'll exile our own creature. Just to be able to gain a life is nice. And drain for one. I forget that it drains. It doesn't just gain you the life. Um, and we'll see what happens. Now we're basically forcing them into a position of having like a sweeper only, uh, because if it is just point and shoot removal, like the, uh, whatchamacallit, this guy, uh, Fateful Absence, uh, they're gonna really be down on card advantage because of the discard spells, so, or the discard ward cost. So that's actually quite nice. Hopefully here, I'm, I don't want them to sweep, <laughs> but if they do, it's kind of okay, yeah. Uh, so the reason it's okay is because we actually can rebuild quite easily, uh, and I think that will be the plan. Now, in what way do we want to rebuild? I'm actually going to go here, um, and I think I'm just going to go here. Again, we're going to kind of entice them to want to sweep, but this allows us to keep pressure up, and then ideally if the goblin stays on the field, we actually get some tokens out of the deal, which is certainly helpful. Uh, later on, we can crack that clue for a card draw as well, if we need to. Uh, that soul transfer will probably be coming in handy very shortly, if I had to assume. Uh, because we are going to need to keep stuff off of their side of the board so we can continue pressuring them. Thankfully, they are restrictive on mana right now. Uh, and so even if they do have a threat, it's probably only one major threat. Uh, in which case, we just soul transfer it away and continue our, uh, our hit. Now this is a prime target for soul transfer. Um, I'm going to decline. I don't actually want to, to do anything there. Let's just make sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Whoops. Choose one. If you control an artifact and an enchantment, you cast both. Oh, excellent. Honestly, I don't play with soul transfer very often, so I apologize. That's just an area or a card I didn't really uh, know as much about, but that was great. So we get to exile one thing and bring a Graveyard Trespasser back. Uh, so let's go ahead and play it. Uh, excellent. Let's exile you. And there we go. Uh, so we are representing lethal. We'll see what the opponent has, but uh, that was a, a great turn. Soul Transfer, 100% came in handy there. So well done. Uh, great include for the deck. I really like this deck. Uh, Joseph, that, that that was really sick. Thank you very much for sharing this one because I've really enjoyed this so far. Uh, obviously, we'll hopefully get a third game in here. We should, we should have time. Um, yeah, this is great. 
Really great. Um, we have a Loth that's going to be able to come down. There we go. We got the win. That's two for two so far. Let's see if we can keep it going, guys. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's see if we can keep this one going. So far, so good. This has been an absolute blast of a deck to play. This is a sketchy hand, though. Uh, I got to be honest. I don't know if this is going to be enough. We're going to try it. This is totally not a reasonable keep, uh, but we're going to give it the best shot we can. Um, I think we lead with the two man lands just on the... It, ideally, we draw another land, and then we just have more options. They mulliganed quite hard. Uh, that's interesting. All right, let's see what we can do. Um, mono black. It is snow covered, so I'm assuming blood on the snow, uh, which is not ideal. It's a Seraph deck. Sick. I love that. Um, do we just throw this out? Yeah, I think we do, actually. We've got plays for the next couple turns, uh, as in three, um, four, five. Uh, and so I think I'm just going to go ahead and play this as is for now. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's attack in. If they block, great. This has death touch. <laughs> Um, looks like they're not willing to. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm actually just going to go ahead and exile this. Keep the pressure off of us. They're down on resources, as we know. Uh, while this did help them out a little bit, they're definitely not in the best of places. And so I think I'd rather just keep things kind of moving forward like this. Um, excellent. You know, I'm actually going to go this route. Um, we'll get Seraph out of there. And we'll get an attack for two in. Uh, I actually really like Tainted Adversary because, again, it's a little tricky uh, for them to just freely attack in. And they are, like, flooded with fight riggings. And thankfully, we dealt with the uh, the Shakedown Heavy here because I think we would have been in really bad shape otherwise. Uh, not that we're necessarily, like, set to just win the game, but we're definitely in a much better position. So that's helpful. I'm going to go ahead and Lolf here. And I am going to do this first, um, just in case they do happen to have a kill spell for something. That's fine. Um, we'll just exile the card out of their graveyard, despite it not really mattering too much. Um, but man, so far, this has been really interesting. I do really like this fight rigging deck, by the way. It's a really sick deck. Um, and they are going to get a trigger off of it. Two triggers, in fact. So this is going to be scary. Blood on the snow. Okay, really glad we threw the Loth down, uh, because <laughs> we actually do get all the counters back on Loth, which is great, uh, and they killed their own creature, <laughs> so, sure, uh, whatever you say. Uh, let's see, I mean, we've got so many great options, I feel like, at this point. I'm gonna throw this down for the land for sure. Oh, all right, we did it! Yeah, that was really great. Uh, that's three three games undefeated. That was amazing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one a little bit short, solely because I am kind of pre-recording as much as I can. I'm going to be out while this goes up, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, so undefeated. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate it, and I, I'm calling you Joseph based on Chief Joseph off of Aether Hub, so I hope that's correct, uh, but I do really appreciate you. Guys, again, I just want to remind you, if you've got a deck that you would like to share with us, please do. We have a, a channel for that in our Discord. We obviously focus mainly on Standard. I know we got a lot of other submissions. We do have a flex day in there, so we'll try and jump to some of those as well, but uh, for the time being, definitely focus on Standard if you, if you have a deck, of course. Uh, uh, as far as this one goes, I mean, it worked great. It's difficult to deal with threats. It's got the answers it needs. Uh, and it has a really reasonable curve because everything's pretty low down. So uh, for the most part, this is a great deck. I had a, a lot of fun with this. Now, I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive there are going to be matchups that are much more difficult than others. So do keep in mind, uh, this was a small sub subset of games, but it did go undefeated in three back-to-back -back games. Uh, which is why I mark these as undefeated. So uh, I'm really happy with this. I really enjoyed it. And it was just such a blast to be able to play a Rakdos mid-range deck to, to succession. Uh, is, that, is that correct? With success, it, it did good. There it is. It did good. Uh, that was a blast. So thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow if I can get more gameplay recorded. Uh, we'll see about that.